Hi everyone, this is the Regrow Milkweed for Monarchs part two that's designed to give you specific information for participating in this study as a citizen scientist. Um, this presentation is specific to folks who have one milkweed patch available to them. If you have more than one patch that you're working with, uh, there's another version of this webinar that will have a little bit different instructions that are tailored to you. So if that's you, you're gonna wanna back up and uh, use that link instead. So let's get started. The information that I'm presenting here is also in written form under the Four Citizen Scientists tab on our website. So feel free to refer back to that as well. Here we're just going to give a bit more detail with pictures and illustrations that we thought would be useful. If you plan on being part of this project, the first thing you should do is make sure you're connected to us by signing up for the email list. Uh, given that you're watching this, you've probably already done this, but it's important to make sure you're signed up since this is the main way we'll be communicating with people over the summer. Uh, once folks start sending in data, we'll send out results every week or two so you can see the big patterns in how many monarch eggs and caterpillars people are seeing. And we promise not to spam you with too many emails. Here's an overview of the timeline for this study. As we post this webinar, it's late May, and we're hoping that folks will watch this now and into early June. Uh, the beginning of June is a great time to locate the milkweed patch or patches that you'll be studying. At this point, most of the stems should have come up out of the ground. If you scout too much earlier, you'll miss some because they haven't emerged yet. Next, we'll ask you to start the experiment by cutting back half of the milkweed patch around the time when milkweed in your area is beginning to flower. So for us in Michigan, this is about the middle of June, but it could be a couple weeks earlier or later for you, depending on your location, and that's fine. For this study, the timing doesn't need to be totally precise. Next, a couple weeks later, the milkweed stems will start regrowing, and then it's time to start counting monarchs and submitting data each week. And we're asking folks to submit data for at least four or five weeks, although longer is fine too. Um, so depending on when you got started, this will take you around to the end of July. Um, and finally, I'm sure we'll have some folks who hear about this project and want to get involved after it's too late to join the first round. Um, and if that's you, stay tuned, and we hope to have opportunities for another round of people to get started by cutting back milkweed stems in July and then repeating the experiment. So stay tuned about that. All right, the first step is to locate a common milkweed patch. If you're not sure you've identified it correctly, tear open a leaf like you see here on the right and it should produce some droplets of white latex. The latex can irritate some people's skin so it's a good idea to avoid touching it. When you're identifying common milkweed, there are a couple of lookalikes to watch out for. One of these is dogbane, which is in the photo on the left. And this is a milkweed relative that can also make milky sap. It can be tricky to tell apart, but common milkweed tends to have a hairy stem while dogbane doesn't. And dogbane flowers are whiter and in, uh, in a smaller group. You might also find other milkweed species like swamp milkweed, which is in the photo in the middle. Um, we don't wanna use these other milkweed species in this study. We're only interested in common milkweed, which is on the right. Um, compared to common milkweed, swamp milkweed is found in wetter habitats. It tends to have narrower, pointier leaves, and it usually doesn't grow in large patches. You can use any size milkweed patch as long as it has a few stems. Um, in our research, we've usually tried to find patches that have at least a few dozen stems, but if all you have is a smaller patch, that's okay, and you can still participate in the study. And just a final note, um, if the milkweed patch that you're interested in isn't on your property, please make sure that you have permission to study it before moving forward. So once you've found your milkweed patch and it's time to get started, the first thing to do is divide it in half so there are around the same number of stems on each side. Um, in our research, we've used flags or posts to mark the halfway point, but you can use whatever's available to you. It could be as simple as pushing a stick into the ground to mark the halfway point. Um, once you've got your two halves, Flip a coin to select which side will be experimentally cut back and then which side will be left alone as a control. The next step is to count the number of milkweed stems in each half of the patch and then record this information. The next step is to fill out a patch registration form. And this is something that you'll do just once for each patch of milkweed uh, when you're just about to cut back the stems. And this form enters the milkweed patch into our records so that we'll have some basic information about the patch. Um, there's a link to this form under step four in the detailed instructions. And it's a Google form that you should be able to fill out on your home computer 
or on your smartphone or whatever device you're using. On the Google form, the first thing you'll do is pick a pin number for the patch. And this is like an ID code so that we can keep track of your milkweed patch and link it to the data that you entered later. You can pick whatever numbers or letters you like for your pin. Just keep in mind that we can see it, so don't use your ATM pin or your social security number or anything like that. Uh, just make sure it's something you can remember. Um, then you'll have to enter your state, uh, county, and today's date. Next, we'll ask some questions about what's happening around your milkweed patch. And this is so we can tell if regrowing milkweed in some contexts works better than in others. The first question asks about the immediate surroundings of your milkweed patch, like whether it's growing in a garden or a lawn or an old field, etc. cetera. Uh, the second question asks you about the broader landscape context. So if you were to consider the landscape out to about a mile in every direction from your milkweed patch, is it mostly urban, suburban, or farmland? And it's probably a combination of those things, so it's up to you to decide which of these um, surroundings is the most common one in the landscape around your milkweed patch. Then there are just two more questions on the registration form. First, we ask what tool you're gonna to be using to cut back the milkweed. And then second, there's an optional question for entering the exact latitude and longitude of your milkweed patch. And if you choose to submit this information, we'll use it to analyze how much farmland and forest, city, et cetera, is in your surroundings, and then see if different types of surroundings correlate to how many monarch eggs we see. Um, if you answer this question, you'll need to use Google Maps to figure out your exact latitude and longitude. Um, finally, there's a space for comments at the end, and then just be sure to hit submit and you're done. So once you've filled out the patch registration form and submitted it, then it's finally time to cut back half of your milkweed patch. And if you're under 18, you need adult supervision for this part. Um, also, if you see any monarch caterpillars on the milkweed stems that you're about to cut back, now would be a good time to move them out of the way. Um, when you're cutting back milkweed stems, there's always the risk that some monarchs will be lost. Uh, but so far, we've found evidence that the increased use of the regrowing stems can actually outweigh the risk that comes with cutting down the older ones. There are lots of ways to cut back milkweed, and in this study, we're interested in comparing the different methods. So we're asking folks to use whatever tools they have available. Um, whatever you're using, please remember to stay safe and use the tools only like they're intended. Um, on the simplest end of the spectrum, you can use hand pruners or loppers to cut the milkweed stems individually. String trimmers can also work well. And in our past research, we've used trimmers that have a brush blade attachment, like uh, you can see in this video here. If you have larger equipment, like a brush hog, you can use that too. Uh, of course, this is gonna cut all the vegetation in the milkweed patch and not just the milkweed stems. You may be able to use a lawnmower, although the vegetation is probably gonna be higher than you're supposed to cut back with most lawnmowers. Um, so if that's your tool of choice, please proceed with caution and don't try to cut things that are beyond the intended capacity of the tool that you're using. Whatever you're using, uh, we're hoping that you'll cut the stems to somewhere around two to four inches. So that's it. If you've cut back your milkweed and submitted the registration form, then you're good to go for now. And uh, you can wait until your milkweed stems start to regrow in a couple of weeks. And at that point, you'll be ready to start counting monarch eggs and caterpillars every week and submitting the data. So the final module that we've posted has instructions for how to do this last part.